Hello, I'm Catherine. And I'm Catherine. And this is Pompey Sundays at Home. I'm Catherine. And I'm Catherine. And this is the last Pompey Sundays at home before we start the service in the cathedral at Pentecost on May the 23rd. Today we're thinking about how we're coming out of lockdown, looking ahead to seeing people again, being able to come out and enjoy people's company a lot more, and all the good things that await us. And also, the sort of trauma we've been through in the past year, how difficult it's been. And we've got to hold those things together and um, keep that sort of tension somehow and know that God is with us in both the hard times that we've been through and these new hopeful times that are ahead of us. So that's our theme for today. Mm. I don't know about you, I'm feeling actually a bit apprehensive. It feels a bit bumpy, hmm. the whole idea of coming out of lockdown, because it was it was horrible and strange going into it. But we've kind of got used to the routines of it and to meeting people online. And, and I think, gosh, it's, it's all going to change again. <laughs> and actually, we're not quite sure how. And yes, that's it's right. It's a bit disorienting. Yes. And we don't, well, it's not going to be the same as it was, is it? We're not going back to the old days. Yeah. We're moving into something that's that is different and new. And we're going to take things from this experience into, into that newness. So we yeah. don't really know where we're headed exactly. And maybe that's part of it. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, we're, we're, we're going forward changed. I think that some of us will have been changed enormously by mm. it, but all of us will have been changed to a certain extent, won't we? And yeah, yeah definitely something that, that will be studied in the future quite a lot, I should think, yeah. in terms of the, the impact it's had yeah. on the whole population and across the world. Yeah. yeah. And there's, you know, there's lots of positives, yeah. lots of positives that we're taking into that. Yeah. There? Yeah. Um, and we've got to, I think there's kind of a feeling that once we can all take a collective breath, kind of think, Phew, we've got through the worst of this now just don't know what's going to rise to the surface. Like we've been holding holding things and yeah. maybe there'll be difficult emotions. And Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Because we're thinking about unlocking today and it, it's almost as if there's a kind of padlock on this yeah. box and yeah. something's going to, yeah, come out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. not quite sure yeah. what. Not sure what. Yeah. Hmm. We're going to have our reading now, and it's a psalm this time, Psalm 139, and it's going to be read for us by Eliza Lauren. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before, a word is on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. 
my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. Intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. The Psalms put us in touch with some of our deepest emotions. Sometimes they're a really helpful thing to read if you're going through a tough time. And this particular psalm really puts us in touch with the depths of our being. It reminds us that God has made us and knows us and loves us from before we were born and for all time. And it's remarkable, isn't it, to be reminded that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't know about you, but I, I don't really think that of myself very often. But we're just reminded in that psalm that we really are and that we're part of God's creation, which is beautiful and miraculous and also fragile. And that means that each one of us is beautiful and miraculous and fragile and God loves us in our beauty and in our fragility. And that perhaps can help us as we navigate these strange times, remembering that God has come to be with us in Jesus, in the midst of our fragility, in the midst of our brokenness. I know Matt, whom we're going to hear from in a little while, talks very powerfully about brokenness and the hope that comes through brokenness. And as we think about unlocking, we're still in the middle of the Easter season. And we're just reminded that the real unlocking for us comes through what we remember at Easter, through Christ dying, through his broken body and rising again and showing us that love of God, which doesn't just go over everything and kind of skate past it and transcend it. Love, the love of God is actually in and through everything in our lives, our very being, even when that being is sick or dying, and then comes through that to the hope of new life and resurrection that lies beyond it. So as our lives are starting to unlock, we can remember that the unlocking that comes from the love of God in Jesus, which is with us if we're locked down or if we're unlocked and when we're just navigating that strange bumpiness in between the two. So as we enter more hopeful times, we remember that we have the hope of Jesus in our hearts through all times and give thanks for that. And now we're going to hear from Matt Crisp, uh, a local GP who works in Portsmouth. And he's seen a lot of what his patients have been through with lockdown and the effect on well-being. And also spoke to me about his own experience of um, losing his mum during the lockdown and what that was like for him and how his faith supported him, how God was close to him in that experience. So Matt, Welcome and thank you very much for um, talking to us this morning. It's great to have you here. Have you here? Thank you, Catherine. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. So, Matt, you're a, you're a GP uh, living and working locally here in Portsmouth, and um, so you'll have seen a lot of the effects, really, of the, the pandemic on people's well-being and and their mental health and so on. And you yourself have also experienced um, some bereavement in this time, losing your, your mum last December. Um, I wondered if we could start with that. What was that, what was that like for you and for the family? Yes, obviously a very uh, particular and emotional time. Um, I mean, just to, to set the scene, my, my father actually died at the beginning of 
2020, um, early January. And, uh, and so we, um, we celebrated his life and said goodbye to him before the pandemic, but literally just, just before we went into it. So uh, and my mum was in care. So we had the experience which many of us will have had uh, with loved ones in care, you know, in safety, but isolated and away from family contact. So that was that was a, a very tricky um, period. Um, and then my mum had her sort of large stroke and fall uh, in December, which was her, her sort of final illness. And we just had a, a couple of weeks to to kind of come to terms and and say goodbye um so so yes it, the whole year was 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 significant for for mm-hmm. myself and and my family um uh and many many people listening i'm sure will identify with some of those experiences um but i think for for, for me i'm grateful because my my mother had dementia which was a kindness uh so it kind of softened the blow of losing my father. She was incredibly happy in the home. She had a good, a good experience there. And actually the fact she couldn't see us, uh, she couldn't remember that she'd not seen us. So that, that softened that blow as, as well. Um, I think the hardest moment for me was when she was in hospital uh, receiving care there, but very, very difficult to get information and contact with her. So very limited. Um, it was easier when she was in the home, there's more direct contact. So that sense of, of isolation and separation was, was really challenging. Yeah, yeah. And so were you weren't with her at the end, were you able to be? So what, what actually happened, um, I, did, I did visit her in the, in the hospital uh, once, um, which was, was a difficult experience because I'd not seen her um, with her kind of broken bones and, and with the stroke very much affecting her face. So that was very hard to see and experience. Um, and I hadn't had a lot of warning or information um, before I went down there. So to, to find that, that was, that was hard. But we actually managed to get her uh, to get back to the home uh, for the last seven days of her life. And that experience was actually rather wonderful because they, they loved her, they cared for her, and they, they gave her a fantastic send off. Um, there was always someone with her in the room uh, uh, they were family to her where we couldn't be uh, they were playing hymns through the night it was a very very personal uh, and lovely experience and we did all get to visit her in the home and say goodbye so my farewell experience was on Christmas Eve uh, which is a, a Christmas Eve I won't forget <laughs> oh goodness yeah wow. well it's great that she was in a good place and being well looked after that was really positive mm. yeah. oh. and um and you're also you're a gp and you've worked and seen a lot of people's struggles i guess through this time that we're all living through what do you feel have been what are you seeing in patients in terms of their mental health and mm. general effects uh-huh. I mean, huge, huge impact on all, all age groups, um, all types of people in different situations from, from the elderly and their isolation to, to children struggling. Uh, we, we, there's been a, a report this week indicating a, you know, a delay in, in children's development um, you know, uh, as a result of the, of the pandemic. Um, social, socialization skills are obviously uh, have been lost. And then there's there's people stuck in the middle with with jobs or with no jobs, um, financial worries, um, trying to juggle the the, the work of of uh, looking after a family, working at home. There's 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 been such a huge impact, and um, I think really we see a lot of it. But uh, that feels like the the tip of the iceberg. I think I think we all probably carry some some burden from this year. Um, I know some people say they loved it, but uh, uh, I think in the isolation, there has been a huge amount of, of difficulty, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's that kind of underlying sense that we don't know really the effect it's having on us, isn't it? There's kind of a, until we're out of it almost, we're not gonna really know no. true effects, you know? I can speak for myself in the first lockdown um, I live alone so I was I was isolated when I was at home I was working in the surgery but 
coming home to to spend the rest of the the the, the evenings and weekends completely isolated. Um, I couldn't even meet a friend to talk. And after two and a half months, I I I, I felt I carried that stress and strain in my body. I you know I I was struggling, uh, and. It, it wasn't really until I met a friend for a cycle ride that suddenly I felt this this kind of burden fall off me and yeah. it was almost like an instant experience and that human connection is so powerful and uh you know we crack on with life and we we kind of make do and uh soldier on but I think you're right until we experience what we've lost it doesn't become apparent yeah um, yeah it's like we're all going to take a collective breath kind of thing when we're through the worst of this kind of, and then it'll hit us maybe what what we've been through in unexpected ways perhaps um and and yeah and this will this will affect us for many years i'm sure um but i i wouldn't want to stay negative i think there have been opportunities and um things that we've learned about ourselves which mm. i hope uh, will be a positive influence of, on us as individuals and in society as well. We've, we've discovered ways of coping, we've discovered ways of connecting that we would never have thought, even speaking today, as we yeah. are, you know, Zoom is our, is our new friend. <laughs> That's right, exactly. And in terms of your, your faith, how has that been a support to you or mm. how has that been during this last year? Oh, pr profound, you know, so many so many ways. Um, I think in the context of my uh, bereavement relating to my parents, uh, I think that was a big feature. They, ha they had a, an extremely strong faith and they, they brought me up uh, with a wonderful example of, 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 of living as Christians, following God and, and walking in relationship with God. So to, to, to lose them say goodbye, but in the knowledge that they had absolute um, confidence that they would they would be with God and uh, actually for about a decade before they died they were talking about the end and and uh, going to glory is, is what is the term my parents would use and so there was there was huge sadness but also tremendous uh, relief and release they they were in their early early 90s late 80s so they they'd lived long, long lives and so there was a, a gratitude to that um, but I think um, probably one of the most profound experiences where, was when I visited mum in hospital, which was also one of the most traumatic. Mm -hmm. And to see literally her body broken, um, you know, broken arm, broken, broken leg, uh, stroke, you know, lopsided mm -hmm. face, slurred speech. And yet she recognised me. She knew who I was. And she just looked straight in my face and said, I love you, Matthew. Oh. And, you know, I love you all you know, and it took every effort, but I could tell she was smiling with a lopsided smile. And it was a, it was a profound moment. Obviously it's lovely to hear that from your, from your mum in that situation, but it felt like a God moment that God was manifest in her love as it always has been. Um, but it felt like a God moment. And, and the, the image of that has stuck with me. And actually I woke up on Good Friday morning with that image in my in my head and with the you know the easter narrative of jesus broken on the cross for us um expressing his love um even receiving mouth care i gave my mum mouth care in hospital you know the sponge in the mouth and it suddenly just clicked this is how god is present in our lives today expressed in our brokenness and yet meaningful and powerful and um sustaining genuinely sustaining to us gosh i don't know what to say that's so moving and uh yeah what an experience that's wonderful mm. wonderful mm. and uh, you know i think the the, the narrative of, of of christmas mum i said goodbye on on christmas eve and it was the most beautiful sunny christmas eve um and her room faced south it was sunny and literally the last few hours i had with her the sun came through and landed on her bed and there were carols playing and it was just, you know, radiant beams from heaven afar, uh, just flooding her experience. She, she loved the sun. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, that again was a comfort and a joy because she was uh, going to meet her maker. And uh, so those, those things are, I think, gifts to us that God has given to bring light and life and comfort um, in the bereavement. So, so those are just two things that really were uh, an impact to me in the last year. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing those. Really very powerful. As we come through lockdown then and move out of it, what do you think um, we need to do as we're in terms of looking after ourselves um, and coming out of it well? Gosh. I, I think to go slowly, um, to, to, to take um, what we've learned, you know, we've learned to survive in this crazy situation. We have found ways of enjoying creation, enjoying our environment, enjoying connection. And those are, those are precious things that I think we need to continue to invest in. And, and uh, so to go slowly with those things and to go gently, and to pay attention uh, uh, to our world, to our surroundings, to each other. Um, as a doctor, I'm always going to say, look after yourself, eat well, exercise, sleep. They're, they're key things, you know, uh, the temptation might be to rush back to a crazy life uh, living at a, at a faster pace, but we must continue to nourish our bodies and our minds um, and our spirits. Uh, we need to talk. We need to talk about how we're feeling as we discover things that we, we've lost or, or, or things that we're struggling with. We, we need to relate that to each other and learn from each other. We need to listen. Um, reach out for help when we need it, and also reach out to help others who may be struggling. Um, the phrase has been uh, used that we are all in the same storm, but we're in different boats. And our experiences may have similarities, but they also may be very different. And I think we have to be mindful of that. We can't assume that what I'm feeling or what I'm experiencing is the same as the, as the next person. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of your faith for the future, how are you feeling now? <laughs> well, it's it's all about hope, I think. Um, <laughs> we, we've got everything to, to live for. Um, yes, wonderful to have opportunity to connect again, to be uh, face to face, to join with others, uh, you know, as Christians to worship together will be tremendously exciting. So that's something to, to be hopeful for and look forward to. But I hope to appreciate it more and perhaps invest in each other in, in, in those things more. Um, but clearly that there is damage, there is stuff that we, we've gone through, many of us will have been bereaved or, or affected by this. And um, we will need healing um, and we need to trust God for that. Um, that's a very broad term, but uh, yeah, we we we, uh, we just have to hope that God's love will be our sustenance. And um, I love the phrase from Julian and Norwich, which just comes back to that hope in God's love, which says that all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well in God. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, it's wonderful to know that there's a, you know, there's an underlying presence and there's a rock there underneath our feet and whatever happens, God's presence never leaves us. So, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for um, sharing all that with us. It's been, it's been great to, um, to hear your perspective and hear how your faith has supported you through the past, the past year. So thank you so much, Matt. Thanks, Catherine. We're really grateful to Matt for sharing those really personal and incredibly moving experiences and also his professional life in terms of caring for people through this period and how he thinks things might unfold afterwards. And it was really wonderful to hear about his faith and how he's sustained by that through those experiences. Now we're going to have our prayers. 
These prayers have been written for us by Catherine, another Catherine, a member of our congregation. Prayers for unlocking. We pray for those who have experienced a loss, that it might become easier. We pray for those who have experienced a loss in the past year or who experienced loss just before and have not had the same ways as usual to address their loss so easily. May they now start to build the shared moments to talk through their memories and experiences and celebrate lives again. We pray for those confined. We pray for those this past year who have had a loss of freedom, such as those who have been shielding, and those who have had caring responsibilities and have been more isolated than usual. We think of those subject to physical or emotional control in unsafe homes. May they feel safer with time and support. We pray for those still in need who are not free. As we come out of our lockdown, so many of us have had our first vaccination and some their second. As in this country, we debate the different choices of vaccines. We pray for those in the developing world yet to receive any vaccine for whom this choice is irrelevant. And we ask for continued action from global leaders for all to be vaccinated by the end of 2021. And finally, we pray for small acts. Through small, simple acts, such as lighting a candle or in a quiet moment in a busy day, may we feel connected to others or commemorate someone or a thought or feeling as we unlock and move forward. May God bless us all. Thank you for those prayers. This has been the last Pompey Sundays at home. It's been great to have your company. Thank you so much for joining us. And from May the 23rd, every week at 9.30 in the cathedral, we will be having our new service, Pompey Sundays. The nave here will be full of these round tables and there'll be a chance to come and catch up with friends, make new friends and to worship and discuss together. So do join us and look out on our social media for all the publicity and further details. It's been great to have you with us today. If you've enjoyed watching this, please do share it and like it with others so that more people will know and maybe they'd like to come along on the 23rd and join us too. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very Bye -bye. much. Bye. Bye.